Hello, hello! Welcome back to another For the Love of Learning video. My name is Miss D and today I'm going to show you two ways of finding equivalent fractions. Yes, two ways. One is the easy way and one is the useful way. So we should get started. So what is an equivalent fraction? Equivalent fractions are two or more fractions that represent the same value or same amount, but the top and bottom numbers are different digits. Okay, so what does that really mean and how do we find them? Let's start with the most simple fraction we can, one half. And we can see that our whole has been split into two equal parts on this picture, handy. So to find a fraction that equals the same as one half, I'm gonna use multiplication. I'm gonna multiply my whole fraction by one number. I could pick any number bigger than one, but you know what, let's keep it easy. I'm just gonna pick two. I'm gonna multiply my whole fraction by two. The rule is, whatever I do to the top number, I have to do to the bottom number. So the first thing I need to do is multiply my top number. So one times two is two. Then I need to multiply my bottom number. So two times two is four. I can now see that my equivalent fraction is two over four or two quarters. We can also prove that these are equivalent fractions using my very handy diagrams. As you can see, when I split my whole into four equal parts, I've got the same size fraction that when I've got two quarters and when I've got one half. Let's have a look at another example. Let's find equivalent fraction to five tenths. Something that's the same size as five tenths but uses different digits. Okay, so let's use our really easy method. We're gonna multiply the whole fraction by two. So let's start with our top number. Five times two is 10. Then we'll multiply our bottom number. 10 times two is 20. So we've got 10 twentieths and this is the same size as five tenths. Now I don't have to multiply by two. As long as I multiply the top number and the bottom number by the same amount, it doesn't really matter. So I could multiply it by three or 12 or 100. Okay, your turn. Here I'm gonna give you five eighths. Can you find an equivalent fraction using multiplication? Pause the video now. Okay, answer coming in three, two, one. What we can do is multiply 5 eighths by 2, and that will give us 10 sixteenths. Fab. That's one way of finding equivalent fractions. Nice and easy, but not that helpful. All we've actually done is make our digits bigger. We don't like dealing with massive digits. We much prefer dealing with smaller digits. So we're going to use division, and this is our more useful method. We can use division because multiplication and division are special friends. Sorry, addition and subtraction, you're going to have to sit this one out. Let's take an example of three twelfths, and we want to find an equivalent fraction. So we could multiply both the top number and the bottom number by two and end up with six twenty-fourths. But six twenty-fourths is not very useful and actually 3 twelfths is a lot easier to deal with. So let's try and make our digits smaller. This is called simplifying. We want our fraction in the most simple form. That means the smallest digits possible. So we have to look at our numbers 3 and 12 and we have to find a number that both of them can be divided by. This is called a common factor. Easiest way of doing this is by writing out all of the factors for both numbers. So 3 can only be divided by 1 and itself, so 3 and 1. 12 can be divided by 1 and itself, because every number can be divided by 1 and itself, and also 2 and 6 and 3 and 4. Fab, now we have the factors we need to find the common ones. Now, dividing by 1 is kind of useless, so just forget about that. So that only leaves us with 3. So we're going to divide both of these digits by 3. So 3 divided by 3 is 1 and 12 divided by 3 is 4. Let's write that as a fraction. We've got 1 over 4, which is 1 quarter. We now can see that 1 quarter is equivalent to 3 twelfths. That also happens to be equivalent to 6 twenty-fourths, but 1 quarter is just so much easier to deal with. Let's look at another example, 6 fifteenths. What are the two ways we can find equivalent fractions? Multiplication, division. So let's multiply both numbers by two. We get 12 thirtieths. 
fine, just not that useful. We can also divide both numbers by finding their common factors. So let's write out common factors for both six and for 15. You can really quickly see that one and three are common factors. Now there's no point dividing both numbers by one because you're just gonna end up with the same number. So let's pick the next number, three. We're gonna divide both numbers by three. And remember, whatever you do to the top, you have to do to the, yeah, you guessed it, the bottom number. So let's take six and divide it by three. That gives us two. And then let's take 15 and divide that by three and that gives us five. Okay, your turn. Here are three fractions behind me. Can you find two equivalent fractions? Use multiplication and division by finding common factors. Pause the video in three, two, one. Great, you're back. I'm gonna show you the answers in three, two, one. Thanks for joining me today. Like and subscribe for more videos.